Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Battle Chronicle video. And today we are updating the scene card tier list with the brand new Battle Pass scene card. And along with that, we are going to be updating the scene card tier list by changing the positions of the summer free to play scene cards as they are now finally able to be made level 60, which means that they have access to their second passive finally and of course in this video we're going to be addressing a topic you guys have been asking me to address for a very long time but i'm doing it in this video finally and that is of course what scene cards deserve your memory crystals now of course if you guys want to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comment section down below do you guys agree with everything that's been said and done in this video from the addition of the new battle pass scene card the summer free to play scene cards and of course the memory crystal usage scene cards let me know what you guys think do you guys agree or disagree i'm quite curious to see what you guys have to say down below now first and foremost uh, let's talk about the battle pass scene card and it is very 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 similar to this scene card right here and these plethora of scene cards that we have right here the ones that are basically uh you know giving you a certain damage bonus for your type your role effectively right so the last four months we've been getting scene cards that give special move damage bonus and special move cooldown right so while on paper it sounded really really cool it wasn't a lot the numbers weren't quite high enough like the damage bonus you were getting at maximum level was 25 percent and the uh special move cooldown was only 30 percent the new scene card gives action skill damage bonus and that's also 25 percent and of course the special move cooldown is 30 percent as well this is for an attacker role unit this one right here the raiding gale scene card now to me personally right I think what they're trying to do is now they're going to do something where you're going to be using the next eight months, basically, to do the same thing again and again and again, but for the different roles, right? And when I say eight months, I'm saying that because I think the next three months, right, after Raiding Gale, the next three months after that, so uh, I think it'll be September, October, and November's Battle Pass scene cards will be for speed, defense, and support units, right? And then after that, and the reason why I say eight months, so the four months after the November scene card um, will be, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, and this is what I think is going to happen, it's going to be normal attack damage bonus for each of the types again as well. So attacker, support, speed, defense will get the normal attack bonus, and then they'll also have a special move cooldown bonus. So the idea is, is that you want to use all three on the same unit together because effectively the special move cooldown will be 30%, 30%, 30%, giving you a 90% special move cooldown off rip, which is actually pretty solid, I would say, in grand, in the total uh, grand scheme of things, I should say, right? In the total scheme of things, you could say. And then on the other hand, you have 25% special move, 25% normal attacks, and 25% uh, action skill damage, which on paper looks and sounds really good. And to be quite honest, that is making you want to actually increase the position of these scene cards a little higher. I will say this. I don't necessarily believe that they're going to be insanely valuable still, to be quite honest. Because what you're doing is you're splitting up the damage across all three borders, which in theory isn't a bad idea but when there are scene cards that are giving you more consistent levels of damage across the board and is able to give you that i think that matters a little bit more again this is going to require some testing and some more uh practice to be quite honest but on paper right now what i would personally say right what i will personally say is that i do, do believe i genuinely do believe that this support one is the skippable one out of the three out of the eight or 12 scene cards that we're gonna get right I think the support one is an easy skip, in my personal opinion, because you're not really going to... What support is going to use all that damage, right? Harime barely does any damage on her action skill damage. I'm giving examples of units or support units that don't deal any damage, right? And I've gone over this in a previous video, but you have Harime doesn't deal any damage or not that much damage. Ahmed doesn't deal that much damage either. You have uh, Water Lafia that does deal damage, to be fair to her, right? So there is that... Ashi is more of a debuffer. You're using her for the debuffs primarily and stuff, right? She's still able to do a lot, but for the debuffs primarily, you'd say, right? And so, if you look at all these support units, and we go over a couple of the, the other ones as well, like Cassandra and Riveria and so on and so forth, right? You're not really going to use this one that much. And I think so, this one, this battle pass is probably the most skippable one. 
However, the other ones I feel are a lot more valuable. At least the attacker ones, I would say, are super valuable for sure. No doubt about it. And I think that's where a lot of players will want to maybe tend towards. Maybe go and, and invest in the attacker and speed battle pass scene cards and then maybe defense at some point but that is what i think is going to happen and then you know working it in tandem is going to be super super useful especially because you get that 90 percent uh special move cooldown like i said in total and then of course the damage bonus across all three avenues is still very very handy one thing i will say what is surprising to me is the stats of these scene cards they're all strength intelligence at about 50 points per and then the dexterity is 200 so you're gonna get a lot of dexterity if it stays the same throughout that's 600 points of dexterity basically you're getting across all three scene cards so there is that aspect i suppose right and then of course on the other side you obviously have the fact that you're getting some str and intelligence a little bit of a bonus there which will obviously still come in handy so in that sense it's not bad i think this is a more of a a long-term battle pass scene card you want to get not necessarily something that be amazing off rip right now but inevitably i think it'll be really good to have for sure now when it comes to the uh summer scene cards right the summer free to play scene cards i think just boosting them up a tier is not bad a lot of people will say well gil this one doesn't seem that great right it surely should still stay here what i'm thinking of is it's more so the fact that it is a completely free to play scene card yes the grind is quite immense i must admit i don't know why they made the grind so hard for those watermelon medals but i genuinely do believe that these are some this is still a good scene card to have that damage increase is still nice the stat bonus is good and then of course you're getting that good special move damage as well i think it's very valuable and then of course the fact that it could potentially get a future future upgrade as well for that third passive there's obviously infinite possibilities on what they might do there, of course, right? So something to keep in mind and the reason why I'm keeping it in S, to be honest, and I moved it up to S. I really do believe that's a very good scene card. I'm quite curious to see how they'll handle the future free-to-play scene cards, you know, as well. Like, for example, uh, where is it? This one right here. Where's the um, some, uh, Halloween one? uh yeah this one the halloween one i put in b tier but i think you know with chloe being in a game and also just generally if it gets that six, level 60 that could easily go up to a plus honestly with that critical damage i think it gets as well on that second passive Oof, it's gonna be good it's gonna be very very good now let's talk about the memory crystals us usage and what do i think that you should be using your memory crystals on so first and foremost i think all of these scene cards go up here except for Wicked Grin. Now, the reason why I say Wicked Grin doesn't need it as much, right, is because of the ability board. I think the ability board's introduction has sort of reduced the uh, viability of Wicked Grin, especially when it comes to getting it to level 60. When it was like, le uh, honestly, actually, level 60 would have been actually a lot better. The second passive is actually pretty good. But the first passive, which is obviously the cooldown, is not that useful, to be quite honest. Not anymore, because when you get that ability board, you're already getting your action skills ready on, uh, you know, when the game battle starts. Obviously, this will allow you to get both the charges going. But realistically, even one charge is good enough for the most part when it comes to the start of the fight. And so in that regards, I feel like, Wicked Grin has seen a little bit of a detriment in usage. It's still good. It is still a good scene card. But do I think it's worth using your memory crystals on it? No. I'd probably say no. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I'd, uh, I would say it's definitely not worth it. The other scene cards I would definitely recommend using your memory crystals on. Miss Supporter Supporter for, of course, uh, Arena is fantastic. If they ever add a familiar mode that has Arena in it, this scene card is going to be absolutely insane because you're getting that insane amount of uh, boost. I think it's like 60% boost uh, for for the first 30 seconds. Ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous as to how much that you're getting from this for the first 30 seconds, right? So, highly recommend that. Then, I'd probably boost all of these up as well, to be quite honest. Uh, all of these should be boosted inevitably not the first ones i think i would probably say that this is a good order to have it in maybe uh probably something like this actually i would probably say more so uh let me just change it up a little bit here there we go i'd probably say something like this is probably the best way to go in order i would go, go and do something like this probably to be quite honest just so that you are able to at least get uh, a lot of these scene cards up and running of course right and uh, they are very extremely viable scene cards of course right the ones uh, that are not in uh not being considered are things that have very uh 
uh, stingy conditions do not increase that much in near the, you know their second passive and then of course some of the some of them are completely free to play or come via the battle pass so you don't really want to use your memory crystals on that but that is what I would use my memory crystals on. A lot of people may say like, oh, can't you? Is it really necessary nowadays? I'd still say that in some cases, it is still super, super handy to have. And especially the start of a fight, it can come in extreme use, of course, right? And then the rest of them are all just super damage boosting scene cards, you know? Things that will act extremely, extremely, extremely be beneficial and uh, or be uh, just super handy to have. When it comes to some of your units and typings like for example right with the earth one you you know earth bell is still dominant so of course that earth scene card is going to be still super useful from now till even the next you, uh, you know earth scene card uh, earth uh, unit comes out unless they really directly replace it in the future with like something that gives like 75 percent action scale damage and 25 percent damage boost to its scene card this scene card is not going to get replaced anytime soon and same with the other elemental based ones and roll type ones as well um, the elemental ones, again, same thing as well. Until they get replaced, they're still going to be pretty darn useful. So we're going to have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comment section down below. Hopefully, I could help you guys out in some way, shape, or form. But these are the scene card. Uh, this is the scene card tier list. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me on the placement of these scene cards and stuff. I'm quite curious to see what you guys have to say down below. And also, by the way, I'll mention this as well. I should mention this. Don't use your scene cards right now. Do not. I would say wait until the anniversary comes. See what the anniversary has to offer in terms of scene cards and stuff. And then make the decision. Of course, the, it's too close, right? It's too close to, you know, say wh what you should be using your, uh, you know, memory crystals on just yet. I'm giving you guys the recommendations right now based on what the scene cards are capable of doing. But then in the future, there are scene cards that are going to be even better, of course, right? So that is something you have to keep in mind. What I would personally do with memory crystals is, right, is I would save them until your uh, scene cards are like level 50 or level 55. And then use one or two per scene card rather than using all six of them in one go for one scene card. Wait until you accumulate more of them and then go burr kind of with them, right? And that's my personal opinion. But yes, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.